She's as long as the Eiffel Tower is high. Longer than three football fields. 10 city blocks. And to be exact, 963 feet. Even if Greg Norman himself was to stand on the bows of the QE2, that uh, wonderful golfer could not drive a, a golf ball the distance right down to the stern of the ship. She guzzles fuel oil and consumes caviar with equal abandon. People often ask me, how many miles to gallon do you do, Chief? Uh, and that's around about 50 feet, which means that 20 gallons of fuel, which is the amount that's in the average uh, family car fuel tank, will actually move the ship its own length. The Queen School uh, consumes 15% of the world production of beluga caviar. Those who sail her, captain and crew, speak of the QE2 with fierce, possessive pride. When you walk outside on the bridge wing and you look at the funnel, you think, hey, this is really the best job in the world. Half the thing is everyone in the world knows this ship. The expectations are so high here. Wherever you go, if you make a mistake here, it's headlines in the paper the next day. Very special and without question the finest passenger liner and, and merchant ship afloat anywhere in the world. She is the last of the great transatlantic superliners, built for grace and speed. Like her forerunners, the Queen Mary, the Queen Elizabeth, and the one and only Titanic. And in the height of a hurricane, in the middle of the North Atlantic, there's no place else you'd want to be. Well, she's a very fast ship. She can uh, do 28 and a half knots uh, quite easily, as you can see her at the moment with these horrendous weather conditions that we've got here. Uh, she's just trucking along nicely. For over 30 years and 4 million miles, the QE2 has welcomed passengers as famous as she is. Rod Stewart, he books this suite um, for himself and his wife, and he books another suite just down the corridor for his nanny and two children. But for every famous face who boards, there are thousands more like you and me, travelers drawn to a luxury that recreates the past. I think really it's the last of its kind. I don't think there'll be another QE2. It's a cold, clear evening in December as the QE2 puts out to sea on a winter crossing that will take her over 3,000 miles across the North Atlantic, from New York to Southampton, England. The difference between a crossing uh, of the North Atlantic and a cruise is I think that the crossing goes back in time, it takes you back in time. It's the way people used to travel. And I think this form of travel that we still preserve on board QE2, and we're the only ship to do it, still uh, takes people back to those times. People who traveled years ago love to come back and say, gosh, they're still traveling the Atlantic by a ship. I don't have to go on an aircraft. We basically got a choice between going the Great Circle route, which is the more northerly, shortest route. We can go in the middle, which is what we call the rum line route, or we can deviate down to the south in the hope of better weather there sometimes. This time we're going on the northerly route because that's actually going to give us the better weather this time. And in fact, from Friday onwards, we can actually expect some bad weather. We're expecting gale force winds of force eight uh, and above, and also seas of between five to seven meters from Friday onwards until we get into the English Channel. In command of the ship is a man born to the sea with over 40 years experience in every kind of weather. Well, I think as most ship's captains, the, the sea is in my blood, and that's what drew me to this career. And uh, in my particular case, I'm a third generation seafarer. Uh, my grandfather started his sea career almost exactly 100 years ago, and then my father went to sea, and uh, so here I am. He's a wonderful, wonderful, shrewd captain. Excellent with the passengers. I mean, the passengers just love the man and a very, very fine sailor. 
Good evening, Mrs. Fenley. Oh, great pleasure indeed. Especially warm welcome to you. It's a uh, privilege to be happy you're with us. Thank you. I do have a tremendous responsibility as, as captain of the QE2. I personally take the full responsibility for the safety of up to 2,750 human lives. And not just their personal safety, but their comfort and their welfare. That is part of the responsibility. Would you please welcome to the microphone Master of QE2, Captain Roland Hazel. Thank you, Roy. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm and special welcome to you on this six-day Atlantic crossing. Hasn't it been beautifully calm so far? <laughs> well, I've got news for you. <laughs> no, actually, we, uh, of course, as you know, at nine o'clock this morning, we uh, passed Cape Race, Newfoundland, and we're now out on the open part of the ocean. And there is a, a depression around, and so perhaps by late tomorrow afternoon, uh, the weather may not be so good. And the day after might be a little boisterous, but uh, we have a good, fine... Did you like that, boisterous? <laughs> yes, yes. That, that always gets a bit of a laugh, that one, you know. For now, the sea is calm, the skies are clear, and the most important thing on everyone's mind is, what's for dinner? Tonight, uh, Mauritania has a, uh, a rucka uh, lamb, and then has, and the Coronia has a prime rib. And the princess girl has a duck, uh, duck with uh, cherry sauce. So it's different in every restaurant. It all adds up to an incredible 6,000 meals a day, complete with champagne and all the caviar you can eat. Ah, uh, for the QE2. May she live and another, another 30 years. Another 30 30 years. years. <laughs> My name is Roy Parkinson. I'm the cruise director on board UE2. I'd like to welcome you aboard and help you make yourselves at home. This is the Queen's Room, which is a multi-purpose room used for uh, the captain's reception. We also have ballroom dancing and even some country line dancing. There's plenty to keep you and your family busy on the QE2. Even the pets are treated like passengers, complete with a London lamppost for their daily outing at sea. While the kids are in the nursery, you can take in a lecture. Shop till you drop. Then treat yourself to a proper English tea in the Queen's room. You may be here for the sea air or the spa, the casino, or cocktails in the Golden Lion Pub. But chances are, you'll go home from the QE2 talking about one thing, the food. Now, the restaurants on board uh, I'm particularly proud of because we have five restaurants, and in fact, we're the only ship afloat with five restaurants. Whatever people want, they can have on board QE2. Our Queen's Grill restaurant, where most of them dine, uh, is famous throughout the world for, for being able to produce whatever people want. And this is even in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. I think you get everything from a uh, haggis uh, to uh, a hot dog, or, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it beats me why, why you want to eat a hot dog uh, for dinner, you know. I remember a wonderful time, uh, oh, about two years ago, I was down at the uh, captain's cocktail party in the Queen's Room, 
and I was talking to this lady, a very nice lady, and asked her how she enjoyed the food, because she had a pretty safe bet there in the Queen's Grill. So she said it was fine, but really she had a problem with the menu because it was a little bit complicated and it was all sort of fancy stuff that she wasn't used to. And I did remind her that uh, because she's dining in the Queen's Grill, she can have whatever she wants, whenever she wants. So it went up to the maitre d' came along to her and asked her what she would like for a meal, that she could have anything she wanted. And she said, you know, she'd blown all her money in this holiday, and the one thing she really wanted was an elephant steak. And the maitre d', without batting an eyelid, turned around and said, would that be African or Indian? It's <laughs> a great floating hotel. Uh, we have many problems that they don't have in, in a land-based establishment. Uh, I guess the, the, the most obvious one is if I run out of food, I, I'm in the middle of the Atlantic, I, I can't ring, ring a, a grocery store and have it delivered the next day. Um, for a normal transatlantic crossing, we could go through uh, 200 pounds of caviar or 2,500 pounds of uh, foie gras, but then you come down to the very basics like potatoes and uh, you know you can have a, maybe 500 pounds of potatoes on board at any one time. 3,000 eggs are consumed a day, so you can imagine how many eggs for a transatlantic crossing. He's talking about scrambled eggs, but it's fish eggs the QE2 is famous for. Caviar. So valuable, it's kept under double lock and key. Uh, we keep uh, about $100,000 worth of caviar at any one time in our storerooms. This storeroom holds more caviar than anywhere else in the world outside a warehouse. With your caviar, you'll be offered the perfect champagne from a wine cellar that rivals any five-star restaurant on land or sea. Here we are in one of the two temperature controlled areas for storing wines and champagnes on board the QE2. To my left, we have the connoisseur selection of uh, fine and rare wines. And to my right, we have roughly 10,000 bottles of ordinary Van de Pays going up through to Saint Julien. Total value of this room, I suppose, would be about 150,000 US dollars. Here we have probably one of the most sought after wines in the world. We have the Chateau Petrus. The vintage is actually excellent for uh, Merlot, 1979. Um, also in this uh, particular room, we have our collection of Cuban cigars. Uh, from Monte Cristo number ones, twos, fours. Roughly, we start each crossing with about 250 boxes. And from this room, we issue about 200 to the outside bars every day. In addition to this, uh, the fine wines and the wines in this room, in the other room, we have the uh, champagnes. This will range from uh, the Laurent Perry Demisec, up through to the uh, Rodor and Cristal, 1989 vintage. We carry what, 22 different types of champagne, something for everyone's pocket. After sunset, the atmosphere on board is elegant, relaxed, luxurious. Black tie, of course. And from cocktails with the captain to dinner in the Queen's Grill, a quiet calm prevails. Or so it seems. It takes a staff of hundreds to make sure your meal is absolutely perfect.
I can't think of any other ship in the world that I'd rather be driving than, than, than QE2. Well, she she's really is a legend in her own time. The, these aren't idle words, uh, they, they really mean something. The design of, of QE2 is way ahead of her time. Although QE2 has been in service for 30 years, she is still a very elegant, powerful and beautiful ship. And indeed, um, a lot of these modern ships built right now still don't have some of the features that we have uh, aboard our, our ship. In many ways, the QE2 is a floating city. A full-time librarian oversees the largest library of any ship at sea. It has its own hospital, complete with two full-time doctors and an operating room. You'll find fresh flowers in the greenery, a laundromat, a theater, a salon, a travel agent, and a synagogue. And just like at home, the morning paper is no problem, even in the middle of the ocean. Passengers often ask, where can we buy the New York Times or the USA Today? It's quite simple that we have what's called a satellite shipboard news that comes through by satellite, gets printed off downstairs in the print shop, and then every morning they get delivered through the passengers' doors. It's, um, that's the newspaper. The floating spa is rated one of the top ten in the world. Relax in the misty waters of a swirling jacuzzi. Treat yourself to a luxurious massage, lulled to sleep by the gentle motion of the ship. Or book an exclusive treatment guaranteed to take off up to eight inches in your first session. Now that's worth the price of a world cruise. There's a jogging trail, a boardroom, a bank. And if all the bars were full, half the passengers on board could raise a glass at the same time. But at the heart of the QE2 is a place no passenger ever sees. Just below the waterline are the vast engine rooms. They power the huge propellers and everything else on board, from air conditioning to hair dryers. In fact, there's, there's an island just off the UK called the Isle of Man, and the electrical system on that is about the same size as ours. And uh, We could effectively just tie ourselves up alongside that island and uh, they could shut their generators down and we could feed the island. But it is her sleek lines, not just her power and speed, that take the QE2 through any stormy weather she may meet at sea. You're right, well, July last year we were going across the North Atlantic and uh, we managed to come in contact with uh, a fairly unusual wave and that was estimated pretty accurately and confirmed by Canadian Coast Guard at being 95 feet high. This happened about one o'clock in the morning and uh, the officers were, and the captain were on the bridge and uh, they were looking ahead and all of a sudden this huge wall of water was coming towards you or coming towards us and uh, it just came slowly. We were on reduced speed anyway because uh, the weather conditions were generally pretty bad anyway. But what happened was uh, the bow just went into this wave. Before the wave came there was a bit of a hole in the ocean. The bow dropped down and down and down. The water came over the bow of the ship, estimating some 30,000 tons of water landed on the foredeck. The bow then lifted up again, and there was a little bit of damage on the fore part of the vessel where the forward plates had actually been set in a little bit, but uh, other than that there, I would say 90% of the passengers didn't even know it happened. My gut feelings are very, very seldom wrong, and quite often I'll either phone the bridge and say, oh, is there a shift in the wind and what's going on, or I'll put on my very smart dressing gown and I'll go up on the bridge in my slippers and so they'll have the apparition of this old chap with a grey beard uh, coming up and I'm the only person who's allowed to go on the bridge of the QE2 in my pyjamas and dressing gown. <laughs> in the weather that we have at the moment, uh, we have uh, about 45, 50 knot winds blowing over the open deck. The captain made the decision early on in the voyage, knowing that these conditions were around, that we would actually run ahead of the storm all the time. So what we're doing is actually outrunning the storm. This ship has very fine, slim, elegant lines, and so, as you say, we're sitting here, you'd hardly know we're at sea.
ship, Queen Elizabeth II. May God bless her and all who sail in her. Passage on the QE2, and you're welcomed into an extended family of international travelers who live and work on board. And I'm from the west of England. I come from the delectable Duchy of Cornwall. I live in a little riverside village just right outside Truro. I was originally born in Northern Ireland, but I've been living for the last 30 years in Edinburgh in Scotland. I'm from Austria. From my, my hometown is called Piesendorf. I'm from Glasgow, Scotland. My name's uh, Kevin Barker, I'm the sommelier on board the QE2, and my hometown is uh, Tavistock in Devon. I love meeting people, it is a great fascination and a privilege. I guess the first night you go down to the restaurant and you meet your new passengers, if they're going to be on for quite some time, because they're going to be your friends that you're dining with, and it's very important that you all get on together and like each other, and that's always an interesting evening, the first night on board, dining in the table. Well, since I've been here six years, you realize the same people come back, come back. And even if you don't know them, they'll know you. People, when they come to the QE2, they fall in love with the, the very fact they're working on the QE2. It's such a name. Wherever they go, people say, you're on the QE2. And it's very nice for those people to be able to say yes. No expense is spared to make your journey memorable. Live lobsters are flown in from Maine to resupply the ship in every port. The chefs prepare only the freshest Dover sole and Scottish salmon, the finest Kansas beef, and New Zealand lamb. And in case three meals a day are not enough to satisfy your appetite, there's always the midnight buffet by candlelight. It's as much fun to watch as it is to eat. Voila! Your accommodations on board rival any hotel on land. The entire ship recently underwent a multi-million dollar renovation, complete with brand new marble bathrooms to complement the oversized rooms and sweeping ocean views. Be sure to book your passage early. The phenomenal success of the movie Titanic has created a huge increase in cruise ship travel. The QE2 is now the only transatlantic ship which still makes that historic crossing. It is a poignant association. And indeed it was a Cunard ship, the Carpathia, which actually rescued nearly all of the survivors who were rescued from the Titanic. As a sailor, um, and it's not just superstition, but it's the old ways of the sea, I don't think, personally, the Titanic uh, should be disturbed. It is the last resting place in the grave of a lot of people, and I don't like people poking around in wrecks like that. She evokes the past, but is completely sold out for New Year's Eve at the Millennium. She captures a way of life that has all but disappeared and welcomes the passengers who will still be sailing her when another 30 years have slipped away. In a world of imitations, she is an original.
some of the famous people we've had up here would be Gene Hackman. I've had him a couple of times now. Rod Stewart. Um, authors, Tom Clancy also. Dick Francis, he's a regular traveler up here with us. Also, Sally Jesse Raphael, American show host. That was fun. Now we, we were trying to get her to sort of be as she is on the show, and we're all shouting, go Sally, go Sally, you know, and she would just like, get out of here. I'm on holiday. I have the same problem with, with my wife, yes, when we're driving anywhere, but she always blames me. She says that I should know where I am, you know, automatically, but it doesn't quite work like that, so I know how you feel. Can you drive a car pretty well, it's navigating uh, highways as well as you can uh, ship lanes? It would be embarrassing, and every time, you know, if the... Uh, I, was actually, I was actually stopped by the police uh, last time home, and I certainly wouldn't mention that I work on the QE2, that's for sure. Wow, wouldn't that be exciting? Could I see myself captaining a starship? I think I could. If they retired the ship tomorrow, I would be very upset. Um, the ship is, uh, is an incredible institution, and I think really it's the last of its kind. I don't think there'll be another QE2.